Exercise 15A, Flow Problems. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the flow network diagram. But let's have a look at this rather crappy example. Example one below is a network of sewer pipes. The source, which is this bit at the start, is where all the sewage from the neighborhood comes flowing in. The sewage will pour up pipe A and down pipe B at the same time. So it will flow through in this direction and in this direction simultaneously. The arrows represent the flow. Sewage can only move in that direction. So for example, if sewage went up this way, it cannot go back down pipe E because pipe E is pointing up. So if you like, they have been pressurized. Their weights represent how many liters of sewage can flow in that pipe or the edge at any time. So pipe E can only hold nine liters of sewage at any one time maximum. Now the junctions or vertices connect the pipes. Sewage is not allowed to build up at any of those vertices lest they explode. So just to clarify what that means, if I have 11 liters going up uh, through pipe A, that can flow through this pipe C because C can have a maximum of 12 liters of sewage, but it will get clogged at pipe G because pipe G can only hold eight. So therefore, there would be about three liters stopped here and that would cause that uh, vertex or uh, connection to burst. So we can't have that. The sink is where all the sewage comes out into the bay. What is the maximum amount of sewage or the maximum flow that can flow through at any one time such that none of the junctions burst? Flow diagrams always have a starting vertex and an ending vertex, a source and a sink. And there are several different ways we can solve this particular question. As with all things with networks, it's worthwhile trying to solve it without any sort of rules or formulas first to see if you can use your common sense and then we'll show some different strategies. The first strategy I would like to do is just looking at the problem itself and trying to break up what's happening. If I look at the last two vertices, the ones going into the sink, I know 15 litres can go through H and 10 litres can go through J. So that's a maximum of 25. If I look at the source though, 11 litres are going through and 13 litres are going this way. So that must mean that no more than 24 litres will be pumping in at any time. So I know that that will have to be the largest number. So it is likely to be smaller than that because there are some smaller pipes. So what I'm going to do in my first sort of logical uh, deduction is to have a look at the, uh, the initial, the origin edges, if you like, or the origin pipes, and to see if I can get all of those liters pass through this network. So we've got 11 liters going through A. Can 11 liters make its way through to the sink? So let's find out all the different ways 11 liters can get through. You can go up here, across here, can't go back down E, go through G, can't go back down through F, and it can get through J. So that's the only direction that the sewage that goes through A can go through all of the other uh, pipes. If I look at them, let's have a look at the pipes. There's 11 liters can go through A, 12 liters can go through C, eight liters can go through G, and 10 liters can go through J. Well, the, that flow is limited by whatever the smallest sized pipe is. In this case, it's that eight. So that means that if I let sewage flow through, only eight liters can flow through here because any more than that and this connection will burst. So I'm just going to write that only eight out of the 11 liters can flow through here. And eight. So because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little mark on this network to remind me which pipes have now been completely filled up with sewage 
Well, in this case, this pipe here has been filled up with sewage. Now, let's have a look at pipes. So pipe J is still okay. It's got eight liters. It's still got two liters that can fill up from another source, uh, possibly from source F. Because G is now completely taken care of, there is no more sewage that can pipe flow through. Anything that's connecting into G has to be discarded now. So for example, pipe C, the only thing it can do is to go into G, it can't divert to any other flow, so I don't want to I consider this anymore. Similarly, pipe A can't be diverted by any other means. It has to go through G. G is already taken care of, so no more flow from A can come through. Let's now have a look at pipe B. So pipe B has 13 liters. So what are the different ways that pipe B can flow through? Well, if it goes up this direction, it's going to get clogged up at G because G's already had eight liters from A taken up. So that means now pipe E, there's no, no way that pipe E can continue on. So we can actually cross this friend off too. So what are the ways that the sewage can flow through? So it can go from B to D up to F and J. But how much can flow through? Well, 13 litres can flow through B, 10 litres can flow through D, uh, 14 litres can go through F, and through J, well, it's not 10 litres anymore because eight of those got clogged up or used up with from the first flow. So that means this one only has two more litres left. So we are going to take two litres from this flow. So therefore, that's now 10, it's now clogged up. We put two of those litres through here, two of the litres through here, and we've used two litres out of that 13. Because J is now entirely used up, I can clog that, close that one off. F can't continue on, because uh, F immediately goes into J, so it can't divert anywhere, so we'll close this friend off. So that means we now have the last, the only flow, that we can see is this one here. So two liters have already gone through uh, up this way. So that means we have a total of how many more liters can get through? Well, only 11 more liters can get through pipe B because 11 plus two is 13. Two liters have already been accounted for going through D. So that means only eight more liters can get through. And 15, well, nothing's come through 15, so 15 can get through. So it is limited by the smallest size. So the smallest size in this case is going to be that eight. So in pipe D, two of the leaders went up through F and J. That means it can only spare another eight. That is the next smallest pipe size. So therefore, that's now been accounted for. So we are adding eight, so eight liters are flowing through here. So that becomes 10, and that becomes eight out of 15. So now that pipe's accounted for. Uh, H can't uh, proceed on its own because it's already been cut off by D, and pipe B can't be accounted for anymore. So we'll close that one off too. So, how many litres got through in the end? 10 litres up this way, eight litres is the only other one, so therefore it was a total of 18 litres is our maximum flow. In the next example, what we're going to do is we're going to use this same method and also to show the other different methods that we can to solve this problem.